Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. In today's episode, we're talking about UFOs, folks. Yes, aliens, little green men, advanced technology, because Congress has finally held its first hearing in 50 years, yeah, half a century, to discuss UFOs, UAPs, advanced technologies that we can't explain. And I'm going to be looking at a Fox 11 clip here with Jeremy Corbell that discusses the hearings and things that we should be looking out for. And then I'm going to jump into an article that actually talks about soldiers being told to say, hush, hush about an encounter with a UFO. Now, as always, if you want to support us here at the Bald Brad Show, or heck, support a conservative, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, share this link with your friends and family all over social media. And folks, if you can't tell, I'm a little hyped about this. Many of you that have been longtime viewers know that I love the supernatural. I love ghosts, I love aliens, I love Bigfoot, all that stuff. That doesn't mean I necessarily believe in it, but I love the adventure of it. I would want it to be true, uh, I would want it to be real, all that stuff I find fascinating. So folks, let's go on this journey together into seeing the stuff that's coming out about UFOs. All right, you heard the name Mr. Corbell there. You are name dropped. There he is. Let's bring in UFO documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. This is your specialty. You've been working on this for years now. Thank you for being with us today on such a big day. This is for you. And can we say the UFO community? Absolutely, the UFO community, yeah. Okay, so what is the biggest revelation you think from today's hearings? First of all, UFOs are not a matter of belief. That's a data poor perspective, and this is a data rich environment. So if you look at it this way, every day human knowledge expands, and that's what we're seeing today. Today was this landmark moment. It was a moment a lot of people were, were asking for, and representative government came forward and offered this. It's the first time in 50 years that we've had open congressional hearings on the subject of UFOs. And not only that, today there was a pressure that was put on our intelligence agencies and our Department of Defense to fess up about what they know. And what they know is that UFOs are real, that they're physical objects, that they are advanced craft, that they outpace, outmaneuver, and outperform so I kind of want to pause it for a second because a lot of people, when they see Jeremy Corbell or we talk about UFOs, UAPs, it doesn't mean that they're talking about aliens, okay? They're not talking about extraterrestrial life. They're just saying that these are objects or aircraft or certain materials that have been found that can't be explained. We don't know if it's China. We don't know if it's Russia. We don't know if it's Iran or we don't, we don't know whose technology it is. All we know as of right now, it's not United States technology. Something that's been really pushing this a lot was uh, the late Senator Harry Reid. And you also have Marco Rubio because these craft are flying over our military installations and they're messing with our radar. They're jamming our radar. They're jamming our flight, uh, our pilot's radar, meaning in our, in our aircraft. So they're doing all sorts of stuff and we can't explain it. And I think it is a national security threat. I think it's something that we need to look at. And I'm glad that Congress is at least taking it serious because I'm not saying it's aliens. But if this is coming from Russia, China, wherever, you know, we need to be on top of this because we're late in the game. And I think they're going to expand upon that in a moment. Any of our war technology. So they showed new footage today, actually. They showed new footage. So that is a symbol or a sign of UFO transparency. We're, we're living in a different world. That's we're now living in a world. Your children are going to grow up. And the UFO mystery, the scientific community is going to look at this today showed that the american people want the truth and that our representative government is fighting for us they're going to bat so there was both open testimony and then there was they don't know if they're actually fighting for us i wouldn't go that far i think there's still a lot of stuff that hasn't been revealed a lot of stuff that hasn't been revealed so i want to say they're necessarily fighting for us i think they're trying to figure out what is going on with the unknown and then moving forward with it because of the national security threat. I don't think they think it's aliens. I don't think they're, they think things like that. I think they're just more or less trying to protect the American people, which is the sole job of the government, at least one of the main functions of government. There's behind the scenes classified testimony. Let's put up on the screen this. Today's testimony revealed some 400 unexplained incidents, 11 of them serious enough to be categorized as near misses where military aircraft just barely bruised past UFOs without colliding. The Pentagon has not ruled out the possibility that these incidents could be connected to extraterrestrial life. That's quite something. 
Right, and so you mentioned, and it's really interesting, the, the closed testimony. So because this is a national security issue, because we have machines of unknown origin with extreme capability, we've ruled out that it's our black technology, our dark secret technology. That's what I was mentioning and before. Additionally, it's ruled out to a high degree that this is any other technological nation that we know of. So that is a national security issue. If we don't know who's operating these craft, who, who made them, where are they from, and then, and then also what the intent is. So the closed door briefing. I just wanna pause it for a moment. You're, you're gonna hear clicking, that's not me. That's actually Fox 11 News uh, making some real time edits to the show as they're going through it. So I just wanna be clear, that's not me clicking. If you're going, what the heck, Brad, what are you doing? Not me. That's where the things that would be a problem for national security to speak about had to be done. However, I am highly hopeful that this is the beginning. This is the start. There will be, mark my words, there will be more open congressional briefings and they will bring in people who directly engaged these Good. UFOs for so. the United States military, possibly even fired upon them. Well, we're putting it up there on the screen right now, the screen, stigma has gotten in the way of good intelligence because not everyone believes. So you started off this interview saying that this isn't a matter of belief, but you certainly know that there are still the non-believers. There are skeptics out there. So how do you change that? And one of the things is why haven't more pilots come forward? So they, good so question. that's the thing they have, like I, I could be skeptical of bacteria until I get a microscope. And here's the deal. Our technology is becoming so sophisticated. It's not just somebody saying, like a pilot saying they saw it. It's tracked on ground radar, air radar, collective AI, artificial intelligence. He actually brings up a really good point here is obviously back in the day, people would talk about things that they saw and it's just hearsay right just somebody said that but now we're catching this stuff on film we're catching this on our radar scans we're catching this on our infrared we're having pilots that are able to identify craft saying i don't know what this is i engaged it it jammed my defense systems which is an act of war like all these things are happening so it's no longer just a hearsay necessarily you have our trained pilots our military saying look we don't know what this is and folks this isn't like one of those random encounters I mean, your pilots, I should say your pilots, our pilots are really saying like, we're encountering these on a weekly basis off the East Coast, off the coast of California where I live. So it's not like a, an anomaly. It's not like it's just happening, oh, you know, every like 20 years. They're seeing this, this stuff, they're engaging on a weekly basis, if not a monthly basis. So this is happening all the time. And it's finally just being revealed like people from, you know, Jeremy Corbell's uh, business. Uh, you have now him hooking up with other people like Bob Lazar, Joe Rogan, you know, just making this stuff more known to people. And I think like you see here, uh, that blip down at the bottom from Fox News said, hey, you know what, the stigma is, you know, kind of evaporating, it's kind of disappearing. And you have a lot of people that are being supportive of Jeremy Corbell and his movement on at least bringing this known to people. Now, again, is it UFOs? I don't know, maybe. But I think the biggest thing is to figure out what the heck is this technology what are these craft that are being filmed and documented and tracked i think that needs to be answered before we start going into this little green man and gray man and all this other stuff radar that connects all the pilots together it's on thermal imagery it's on infrared it's on normal photos so you've got all this corroborative video evidence and this is some of what i released with my mentor in journalism, George Knapp. We did that just about a year ago and that's kind of what they were talking about in these hearings and to your point it was stated by Representative Carson when he put this together, he's my new hero. He said, we want to reduce stigma. That's what this hearing is about. Now, why did he say that? It's because I should be obsolete. People like me, where military individuals come to me and have to leak me footage because they can't push it up through the chain of command and get it to where it needs to go. And additionally, the people where it needs to go, they also want it. Mm. So if I do my job right, I'll be out of a job because that line directly of information, that should be healed. You know, that should be put back together. He's not wrong. So what? we can work as, as a single unit. Now, yeah. the other aspect of, of, the, of the hearing was what you said, secrecy, it can serve as an obstacle uh. for solving this UFO mystery. Okay, well, you've certainly done your job well because you have a lot of people who follow you. So tell uh, well, our viewers why they should follow you on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, so he goes on and he describes why they should follow him. And basically what he says is, hey, you know, I'm 
not leaking videos, but I'm putting unclassified videos out there that you might not otherwise see. So when I drop those videos, it's a good reason to follow me on Twitter and Instagram because you're gonna be the one first to know about it. And I agree, that's when I got to see a lot of the videos that Congress used. I follow him on Twitter, I see him on Instagram. And by the way, if you're not following me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, the links are down in the description. Toss me a follow. And while we're at it, folks, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Share this link with friends, family, all over social media. But I want to move into a different story here. And this comes from Steven Crowder's crew. It says, soldiers claim they were ordered to stay quiet about encounter with UFO. This is kind of piggyback on what Jeremy Corbell was talking about. There's a stigma. There's this kind of stigma that's out there that that our military personnel are going to be looked at and seen like they're crazy that they're they're not so because they have encountered a ufo or something of that nature and i think that stigma needs to be gone for again national security purposes if this is extraterrestrial life whatever but i want to know if it's russia china i don't think it is but i at least want to know what the heck's going on so it says look when there's nothing else on television, I enjoy a marathon of ancient aliens, which I do too. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a little silly of a show, but I find it again, fun. I find it adventurous, kind of like those old books. I don't, some people that are young, I mean, I'm young, I'm only 33. I had to think about that one for a second, but there used to be these books called the heart. I think it was the Hardy brothers or Hardy boys. Uh, there must've been from the forties or fifties. I want to say, but it used to be great books. So the older viewers probably know what I'm talking about where you just go on an adventure, you know what I mean? There used to be those movies from the 80s, like the Goonies. You should just go on an adventure and, and and you know, seek out the unknown. And kind of that's what I find fascinating about all this. And Ancient Aliens does a really good job of doing that on the History Channel, at least it used to be on the History Channel. As much as the next guy, but I don't exactly take anything seriously. It's like a fun alternative history, connected just enough to reality to make it possible regardless of how far-fetched. But that's just me. Many people, however, believe we're being visited by little green men and the government is finally getting to the bottom of it. On May 17th, the government held hearings pertaining to the topic of unidentified flying objects, also known as UFOs, and also known as unidentified aerial phenomena, which is called UAPs. So they switched it at some point. The government loves a good acronym, so why not have two? During the hearings, officials from the Pentagon stated that military personnel have reported approximately 400 possible encounters with UFOs, with the uptick in reported encounters up from only 144 in a report released last year. So there's clearly some sort of change making or happening, I should say, in our defense, because now finally more people are coming out and reporting what the heck's going on, which I absolutely love. Again, I think fighter pilots or military personnel should feel comfortable coming out and saying look i don't know what the hell i saw i got some stuff on recording this thing wasn't putting out exhaust this thing was rotating going a certain miles an hour you know it dropped from eighty thousand feet to a foot above sea level in a span of one second which is impossible from what we know like this type of stuff needs to come out and i want hopefully military personnel to feel more comfortable with doing so he also stated that the stigma associated with coming forward to report an encounter needs to be done away with and that's what the government seems to be doing the pentagon's top intel officer ronald i can't even pronounce that moultrie said our goal is to eliminate the stigma by fully incorporating our operators and mission personnel into a standardized data gathering process in that case this person said that they might want to spend some agents or send some agents to go interview staff sergeant travis uh bingham specialist visual Sai and Private First Class, Devel Ingram, and I'm butchering their names. I apologize. I'm a math teacher, not an English teacher. <laughs> Still should know how to read, to be fair. <laughs> An inclusive interview uh, with the Daily Mail, the three veterans described how they witnessed eight bright objects hovering and zipping across the sky at incredible speeds from a desert outpost in Egypt or on the Egypt border in Sinai. Interesting. One thing before I go on, and hardly anyone reading this will understand, is brave rifle veteran <laughs> i think that's more of like a, a a little sponsorship that they're trying to throw in there but so these guys were all cavalry scouts with the third cavalry regiment out of fort hood i served as a cavalry scout with that unit back when it was called third armed cavalry regiment people familiar with this regiment will understand their story is interesting though i suppose not unlike many others before it the initial craft appeared to be spinning as smaller objects emerged from it which seemed to spiral like fireworks. I wonder if it's almost like flares. The craft and smaller objects began moving like fireflies left and right, up and down. I can't imagine any military that has that type of technology. We're talking U-turns, 
while at hypersonic speeds. And this is something Jeremy Corbell has talked about. We have video footage of them changing directions. We have our fighter pilots engaging these craft that have said the same thing, basically pulling maneuvers that are literally impossible. Like we wouldn't even survive as human beings, the stuff that they're doing, nor would the craft. I mean, it literally just break apart. So you got some interesting stuff going on here. And this is going on in Sinai. I have not seen this before. I haven't even heard this story before. So I find this fascinating. I'm reading this in real time. So I'm kind of on the edge of my seat, quite literally trying to figure out what's going on with this. Where I get hung up is when their reasoning for not reporting it changes. One claims he was told, keep your mouth shut by a senior officer after word spread among his regiment about the sighting. Quote, the men said they were afraid to make official reports about the incident for fear of being sent for a career damaging psychological evaluation and said there was no proper process to make such a report anyway. And that's kind of obviously what I brought up at the beginning of the show here is that you don't want them to be put in some detention center, right? Because they're gone nutso for reporting something that they weren't sure of what happened. And again, that's what Congress wants to do is remove the stigma. And this question was actually brought up in the congressional hearing regarding the process, the proper process to make a report. So that was brought up, that was asked, and actually somebody did uh, answer that question through the congressional hearing. Quote, we could have reported an, an aircraft sighting, but how could we have described the fuselage when it had none? Do you see what I mean? That being said, do officers tell soldiers to shut their traps sometimes? Yeah, our squadron, our squadron was under a gag order during the 10-11 deployment, and I won't say why. Would they have been sent to psyche valves? Yeah, maybe, I don't think so. They would have definitely been made fun of though. And the third one, well, you just described the craft as you saw it, weirdo. In the immortal words of former Vice President Joe Biden, come on, man. <laughs> but whatever. Do I believe aliens, if they exist and they perfected in search of stellar travel, unless they can bend space and time, we'll never know about them if they do. Will the government dump billions of dollars in investigating? You bet your devalued dollar they will. Yeah, I mean, government loves to spend money, but you know, this is all fascinating. Do I think it's real? Maybe, I don't know. I'm one of those guys, I have to have evidence. I have to see it. Seeing these videos, I'm just not sure. I'm not fully committed yet, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you believe in all this stuff? Do you think UFOs, UAPs are real? Like the, I'm not saying the little green men. I'm saying, do you think at least there's advanced technology out there that's either manned or unmanned that we don't know what it is, that it could be held by Russia, China, a foreign country, let me know down in the comments below. But I also want to know, let's get a let's get a little bit personal here with the bald Brad show viewers. Do you think it's little green men? Do you think it's little gray men? Let me know in the comments. Don't don't hide. Nobody's going to make fun of you. If, you. if they do, I'll I will come support you. You know, this is supposed to be fun. Okay? No, it's not judgmental, all right? But it's curious to see where the bald Brad show viewers are at. Little green men, I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've watched Jeremy Corbell's documentary. I've heard it's gray men. They had that sighting. I think it was in like Africa or something like that with the little children that actually engaged with these uh, beings supposedly. But like I said, I find it a ton of fun. I've even thought about doing a Supernatural Saturdays or Supernatural Saturday. Uh, every Saturday doing a reaction video of like a ghost video or a Bigfoot video or a UFO video and talking about it. And if you guys would be interested in doing that, because I want to upload on the weekends and at least do one video or two videos, uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to do a Supernatural Saturday and we can kind of have some fun with some things that's outside of politics, you know what I mean? Um, that was always what I wanted this channel to be about was yes, mainly politics, but have an opportunity on the weekends to kind of explore some funky, weird stuff. You know what I mean? Go over some, maybe some pseudoscience, you know, go over some weird stuff and kind of, you know, change things up a little bit over the weekend when we're supposed to relax and, you know, have a little bit of fun. You know, sometimes politics, I think, can be a little bit much and a little bit overbearing. So let me know if you guys would be up for that. I don't know if the Bald Brad Show viewers are, quite frankly. I probably still do it because it's the Bald Brad Show and I'm Bald Brad, so I might as well upload what I want to upload. But I want you guys to have fun with me because I love interacting with you. I love the viewership that we have here in the community that we've built. So with that being said, as always, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Share this with your friends and family all over social media. Folks, I will see you later today here on The Ball Brat Show.